Hello friends, let us uh, today study another uh, novel and emerging technology in food processing and preservation uh, that is microwave heating. Before coming to the microwave heating, let us understand what is it and particularly let us uh, little bit discuss about the dielectric heating. Actually, what happens when an insulating material is subjected to an alternating electric field as you can see here in the figure there is some dielectric material is kept here it is held and alternating electric field through some AC source is supplied to this material. So, when this electric field is applied then the atoms in the material get stressed and because of the interatomic friction heat is produced and this heating process is known as dielectric heating. This interatomic friction is caused by repeated deformation and rotation of the atomic structure which also is referred to as polarization. So, this technology that is dielectric heating generates heat energy within the product and throughout the mass simultaneously due to the frictional interactions of polar dielectric molecules rotating in response to an externally applied AC current. So, you can say that it is an advanced form of heating much better form of heating in comparison to the conventional heat processes which are normally used for the food processing. Under the international agreement only certain frequencies are allowed for the industrial scientific and medical use and this is just to avoid communication with the federal or interference with the federal telecommunication system because the same sort of radiations etcetera are also used in telecommunication. So, normally for uh, this uh, radio frequency operations that is in the, you dielectric heating may be of two forms that is radio frequency heating or microwave heating. So, for radio frequency heating 13.56 and 27.1 2 megahertz frequencies are normally used or you can say in general that is 1 to 200 within this megahertz range. Whereas, microwave it may be within the range of 300 to 300 gigahertz, 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz in general generally that is the microwave systems which are used in food processing they have frequency in the range of 2450 and a bandwidth within the range of 896 to 915 megahertz. Let us see the microwave heating. Microwave heating is generated by the absorption of microwave by a dielectric material and this absorption of heat by the this absorption of microwave by the dielectric material results in the microwaves giving up their energy to the material with a concomitant rise in temperature. And you can see here in this picture that in the conventional heating heat source is somewhere else and then this heat is transferred either through conduction or convection whatever the system depending upon the type of the material and heating source and other heat transport medium it is transferred 
right but in the case of microwave heating wave heat is generated internally and the obviously the time required to come to the target process temperature here in this microwave heating process is attained in a very short time and in fact some researchers they have worked on these aspects and they conclude that it is time it takes about one quarter of the time which is required for conventional heating processes microwave food processing as i told you it uses two frequencies that is 2450 and 915 megahertz normally 2450 megahertz frequency is used for home ovens whereas for industrial ovens both 2450 and 915 are used so the microwave heating processes like any other process this is also influenced by certain factors that is factors of the material factor of the environment and other factors so here the important factor influencing this process that is microwave heating include the dielectric properties of the material thermophysical properties of the food and frequency of the microwave used among the dielectric properties dielectric constant and the loss factors or the loss factor are the important process causative agents are which influence the microwave heating process ability of the material to absorb and dissipate microwave energy obviously depends upon the product composition the temperature and microwave properties the penetration of microwaves which is taken as generally it is the penetration is the measure of the ability of the microwave to heat and this is determined by dielectric constant and loss factor of the food microwave absorption decreases exponentially with depth shorter the frequency higher is the penetration you can take the example of ice that at 915 megahertz the microwave can penetrate 30 cm deep whereas at 2450 megahertz it can penetrate only 10 cm deep also the penetration depth depends on the state of the matter same we take example of ice and water and if we take two microwave of 2450 megahertz it can penetrate 10 cm in ice but only 1 cm in water so these are the factors that is the depth frequency and even the penetration depth at the is state of the matter these are the factors which influence penetration depth or penetration of the microwave into the food material and accordingly that the amount of heat etc is then is they can generate the penetration depth can be measured by that is x in meter can be measured by lambda 0 divided by 2 pi the root that is the dielectric constant and last tangent that is the depth lambda 0 is the wavelength psilon is the dielectric constant and the last tangent by this equation one can calculate if you know the dielectric constant of the material if you know the last tangent all right you know the wavelength of the microwave you can easily calculate what is the depth up to which it can penetrate similarly the power 
generated in the food or power absorbed by the food can be calculated using this equation that is p is equal to a constant 55.61 plus 10 to the power minus 14 that frequency and electrical field strength and that is the power of the second power of the electrical field strength multiplied by last factor ok. That is p is the power of power per unit volume f is the frequency and e is the electrical field strength in this equation. So, by these equations one can calculate the penetration depth of the microwave as well as power generated into the oven or power absorbed by the food material. Let us that last, last factor is an important characteristic. So, let us let us see that what last factor means actually that is last factor is the measure of the loss of energy in a dielectric material. This loss may be due to conduction, slow polarization and other dissipative phenomena. Either, either of these processes or any other processes there might be the loss of energy. So, the loss factor is the total loss of energy. Okay. Most of the food have moisture content and therefore, they have high loss factor and thus that is high loss factor means that they can readily absorb microwave and radio frequency energy and flash over is not a problem. As you have seen earlier loss factor of ice is less than that of the water water has more loss factor which you can also see in this figure. It has uh, been shown here by some researcher that variation in dielectric loss factor of water and ice. Okay. So, it shows that the water has more loss factor than ice. So, water can heat easily and more heat it can be heated more than that of the ice glass, paper and some polymeric films have a low loss factor that what does it mean that they have low loss factor means they are not heated and metals reflect microwave and they are not heated making the microwave oven very efficient in energy use. How this microwave heating actually take place. Let us see the mechanism of heating. There may be two processes that is either it may involve heating through dipole rotation or through ionic polarization. As you can see in this figure both that is that uh, dipole interactions or ionic interaction is shown that in the dipole rotation there is flip flop rotation of dipole molecules like water particularly there is water that has H positive, H positive and O that is negative. So, these molecules are they that are dipole molecules like water there is a rotation repeated changes in the polarity of the field causes rapid reorientation of the water molecule and this rapid orientation reorientation of the molecule results in friction and generation of heat is mainly because of the friction of these molecules ok. Back and also back and forth vibration of ionic salts like sodium chloride you can see sodium ion plus positive uh, chloride ions and these ions move at an accelerated place due to their internal charge and collision between these ions can cause generation of internal energy. Okay. So, these are the ways by which actually the, the main thing is that that uh, molecular collision right that is the 
oppositely charged ion when they are put in the microwave field they try to realign realign towards the oppositely charged uh, of the microwaves and then in that there is a molecular movement and then actually friction and this friction causes the generation of the heat. Microwave systems that is equipment in the microwave there are two main units or components that is one is the magnetron that is the source to generate the microwave and other is the microwave cavity the where the food is or other material which we want to heat is loaded. You can see here in this, this is a schematic representation of the microwave system where this the cavity when the material is loaded oven cavity and then this uh, setup for the transformer etcetera it is with the electrical power plug etcetera. and then it energy is given to magneton and which normally produces the microwave energy and then this energy is passed inside the oven. This is for the commercial or small scale small scalar batch oven microwave oven, but in the industrial ovens industrial microwave systems are larger capacity microwave uh, systems wave guide becomes an important or essential component because in that the magnetron is uh, situated outside the oven. So, the microwaves are generated in the magnetron separately and then with the help of the waveguide these are transported to the microwave cavity. So, this magnetron and uh, waveguide becomes two important component for consideration for proper that is the heating system or proper design or manufacture of the microwave heating systems. So, let us see slowly uh, that is with these two that is what does a magnetron consist of in this schematic figure it is shown that is a microwave oven showing the positioning of the magnetron here is the magnetron you can see that is this the magnetron and other that is in the system now when the microwave is energy is generated then these are the waveguide alright how and this is actually the cavity. So, this is just schematic. So, the magnet, magnetron actually consists of a vacuum tube with a central electron emitting cathode of highly negative potential surrounded by a structured anode. Okay. I will repeat it again that is magnetron consists of a vacuum tube with a central electron emitting cathode of highly negative potential surrounded by a structured anode and the power of the magnetron can range from 300 to 3000 watt depending upon the capacity of the microwave heating system or capacity of the equipment. The waveguide as I told you earlier it channels the microwave into the cavity that holds the sample for heating. There are several modes of waveguide in applicator single mode and multi mode. Single mode ovens distribute the microwave into the reactor in a precise way. In a single mode system the heating pattern could be confirmed and thermal processing could be designed and controlled. Whereas, in a multi mode system the electrical distribution is random and it is hard to determine the heating patterns. Domestic ovens are generally designed with reflecting cavity walls that produce several modes of microwaves and thereby they maximize the efficiency of the heating process. Now, the 
like any other process the mic microwave process also can be a batch process it can be a continuous process all right that is in a batch process obviously the food sample is placed in the oven for a predetermined time to achieve a target temperature and the power level is normally adjusted to achieve a certain desired temperature difference in given time frame in this is that just again a schematic of the batch process and the system it is the conventional microwave oven but it is modified to suit the drying process you can see here there is one air inlet and then balance system to conduct the drying studies and also there is air outlet so actually it the it is the here the microwave capacity that is where the microwave uh, that is the food sample is kept in the continuous process you can see in this diagram that is the raw fluid or sample is pumped maybe peristaltic pump are used and this material is pumped through teflon or glass helical coils which are placed inside the microwave oven or cavity okay and it may be one cavity or maybe several microwave ovens connected in series for the desired heat frequency or for desired heating process okay and the fluid after being exposed to the desired amount of microwave is allowed to pass through a holding section and allowed to be kept there or held for a predefined or predetermined holding time this is then followed by chilling in some form of a tubular heat exchanger or such other device for measurement purposes thermocouples are normally used for gathering sample temperature at the entry and exit points whereas fiber optic probes are used to monitor the temperature inside the cavity or oven now after having studied in brief that uh, process about the microwave how the microwave heat is generated what are the principles of microwave heating what are the different microwave ovens etc let us see its uh, application aspect so in the particularly in the food processing obviously this microwave process has lot of advantages okay it is a type of volumetric heating so the heat is uniform it is instantaneous not much heat transfer another problem which is uh, associated with the conventional heating processes are here in this case it results generally in the reduced processing time it is instantaneous process and control becomes very easy even cleaning etc becomes easy selective energy absorption by the polar molecules and this facilitates its use in the drying applications it can be combined with other energy sources and chemicals etc to improve the efficiency of those processes of course like any other process the microwave processing also it is advantageous but it also has certain drawbacks cuz if uh, you compare with uh, other sources uh, particularly with the area heating etc the microwave generally they lack the desired penetration length or they have less penetration power and therefore particularly its application for the large samples may become problematic also because of the internal heating the development of flavor etc which are associated with the millard reactions and other things they lack here that is those which are like a delicate brown color of the development of the brown color of the material crispiness all right 
all these processes actually not because of the internal heating involved no heat transfers alright no surface heating. So, these general which are requirement of some food processes. So, they like here. So, these process heating process cannot be or use or it limits its use in those products ok. And of course, the measurement problems that is the actually there are although there are methods and uh, optics uh, or cables etcetera by which the temperature can be made, but anyway sometime it becomes difficult to insert that probe etcetera into the cavity oven and without any loss of the microwave energy. So, it becomes problem. Other important aspect here the problem drawback of the microwave processing is that dielectric loss factor increases with the increase in the temperature of the material due to ionic conductance and this results in the hot areas receiving more energy than the cold areas. And this phenomena which is known as thermal runaway results in significant non-uniform heating. So, that is the one major drawback of the regarding food processing application of the microwaves. It can be used for tempering purposes, for pasteurization, for sterilization, for blanching, for dehydration, for cooking or even for other food processes for like for example, baking they can be used in coagulation improving the functionalities etcetera. They can be used for coating, gelatinization, puffing, roasting. So, for wide ranging of process applications for accordingly for preparation of different products etcetera or for improve the characteristics of the product to increase their shelf life these microwaves can be used. Okay. So, whatever the process where heat is used that these microwaves can also be used but with different objectives. So, that is the microwave can be used for pasteurization purposes or for sterilization purposes. Here in this figure you can see it is a continuous flow pasteurizer where there is the for the juice or it can be used for any liquid material there are two microwave oven that it can be batch system one or it can be several is connected together and the microwave is coming the material is going and it is exposed into one section to the desired microwave all right which are the probes or fiber optics and then it is passed through the second unit and after that it is a finally once it is sent to the holding tube and followed by chilling ok. So, in fact uh, there is the it is a sterilization or pasteurization it is performed in faster process that is the rate of the process is because that is energy efficiency is more here. So, it can be conducted at the very fast and the come up time is normally less here in this. So, required temperature can be obtained instantaneously. It is it has advantages to overcome the limitations imposed by slow thermal diffusion processes of the conventional heating processes. Microwaves can easily penetrate the whole frozen product thus effectively reach the inner regions within a short time. Microwave tempering can be performed in few minutes for a large amount of frozen product like even 24 to 40 kg weighing frozen products they can be tempered just within 5 to 10 minutes. The in this system you can see that these are again taken from the literature these bigger microwave pasteurization in container solid foods pasteurization system for the microwave where the filling the product then film and valve applications for the product is done finally, cooking and pasteurization this is the conveyor belt in the material is made and then it is passed through that uh, microwave system where it is exposed to desired microwave power label and then finally, it is given the as you have seen in the earlier case it is given the whole required whole time and then finally, cooling and similar thing is that this is the microwave sterilization system 
these figures are taken from the literature just to give show you an idea of the equipment okay similarly microwave assisted vacuum drying of the food this is another very very interesting and good application of the microwave that is it's called mvv mvd that is microwave drying and you can see the material that is before in this figure see the material before drying how does it look and after drying there is there is a no much difference in the color another characteristic that was sinkage but however the water is removed the size has reduced but there is not much difference on the texture and other things okay so it microwave assisted vacuum drying results in significantly rapid drying rates right and the vacuum it enables the product to be dried at a lower product temperature so the combination of microwave and vacuum it becomes a very good and novel means of drying and particularly the drying of those materials which have heat sensitive components where there is the uh, like bioactives or health ingredients which are uh, which have the danger of getting evaporated in the conventional processes they can be retained to a better extent in this microwave assisted vacuum drying and here of course as external heat transfer by convection is absent in the vacuum so by using microwave drying time is reduced significantly it results in significant decrease in the operational cost and many researchers have successfully used this technology that is microwave assisted vacuum drying successfully for dehydration of grapes cranberries bananas tomato carrot garlic kiwi fruit apple pear etc that is mostly the fruits which contain which are, that is heat sensitive component are which because of their low glass transition temperature in conventional therm thermal process they are uh, drying and dehydration becomes difficult so for drying up such products this becomes a very good process so, well friends now in this lecture you have uh, we have so far discussed or studied about the microwave technology which is a novel technology or or you can say an advanced heat processing technology which generally eliminates the problems which are uh, there in the conventional heating processes and it is a improved means of thermal technology of the heating system for the food where you can reduce the efficiency of the heating you can reduce the process time you can get better energy savings and economics better economics in the products and at the same time the quality of the product can be maintained you can get good quality in the processed product thank you